Merrill. I'm the current president of SIGTA and I joined in fall 2015. What's going on everyone? My name is Bailey Carlin. I'm a former president, former vice president of programs, current new member educator, and former student <coughs> at University of Minnesota. Good morning. I'm Mark Eckert. I'm the former executive vice president and current judicial chairman. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tim Flynn. I'm former vice president of membership for Sigma Tau Gamma Fraternity, also former assistant new member educator. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Fish. I am former vice president of programs and former social chairman. All right, so over the past couple of years, Sigma Tau Gamma has went through many changes, both locally and nationally. Um, we have changed our principles, our colors, our flag, and most importantly, our mission statement through our nationals. Our new mission statement is, we strive to build noble generations of men who always endeavor forward. We live, up, we live up to this mission statement every single day by the everyday actions of our brothers. As a brotherhood, we hold each other accountable and make sure that every one of us is living up to the mission statement, purpose, our new principles, and most importantly, our creed. <coughs> one thing that we strive ourselves a lot on in Sigma Tau Gamma Epsilon Lambda is growth and development of our members. Being a member of Sigma Tau Gamma, has helped me grow and develop into the man I am today. Each and every brother will go out of their way for you and make sure that if there's a chance for personal growth and development, it'll happen. From personal experience, I would never be as comfortable as I am here today making this presentation to you guys, and I attribute that to this fraternity and my brothers. They've pushed me a lot to get to this point in my life, and we all live up to the quote, not without my brothers. We've recognized that we have changed, but change is good, and we're always making the best of it. We've changed in very positive ways over the past couple years, and some examples are some better academic plans, reworking our risk management policies, working with various campus offices to put together workshops to improve our organization, putting events on with other organizations to improve interfraternal relations, which we did not do a lot of before, so we're really trying to work that in, and better community service plan and philanthropy opportunities, and better recruitment. So we feel that these changes have led to the improvements that we've made the past couple of years, and we always are striving to continue to better ourselves through these actions. Thank you, Jake. So something that we require, and obviously highly encourage, they go hand in hand, is that <coughs> brothers have to hold either an on-campus job or be part of a club or organization outside of Sigma Tau Gamma. This was a result of actions by previous eboards due to the fact that we felt once people joined fraternity and sororities, not just Sigma Tau Gamma, but other organizations on campus as well, that became their life and that became everything. And while that's important, and of course it's a big part of your life that lasts a lifetime, we thought the skills that you gain once you join a fraternity can help you to, you can implement that in other clubs as well and become leaders on campus outside of your fraternity. Brothers are also required to attend an event or presentation of another fraternity or sorority, SA club, or participate in a community service event weekly. We check up on this during what we call Roll Call Weekly Chapter. You report your community service hours for the week, you report your classes missed for the week, and you report the event that you went to that week. If you miss an event one week, then you are not allowed to come to the house for any social function we have the next weekend. This is a penalty, obviously, and something that we've actually been thrilled to find out we've only had to ban people from the house one time. So people are taking to this, and we have people who have joined clubs and joined other organizations because of this rule. And also, three of these events every semester need to be career or future related. We also want to use Sigma Tau Gamma as an area to, for people to expand outside, not just of their college life, but their career later on. And we found SUNY Plasterworks Campus offers a variety of these events every single week, every single semester, that you can go and really enhance your future through these events. Campus and community involvement is also a big thing, as I just mentioned, so I figured I'd tell you some of the organizations that we've put brothers in, and this is just over the last year. We have members who are members of the basketball and lacrosse intercollegiate sports teams, interfraternity council, fraternity and sorority life office, marketing club, ski and snowboard club, cardinal points, fitness center slash personal training, student ambassadors, residence life, teacher's assistants, jujitsu club, summer orientation staff, and student association judicial court. And I've had members of every single one of these organizations come to me personally when I was president, come to Jake as well, he supported me and said, I wouldn't be president of my other club if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't have held a position in IFC if it wasn't for you guys pushing me to go to these events every week and get involved outside of Sigma Tau Gamma. All right, thanks Bailey. So just to name off some GPAs for our academics, we left 2015 with a 2.73 QM GPA. So going into 2016, we really wanted to improve that. So we achieved a 3.0 in the spring of 2016 and a 2.94 in the fall of 2016. And now our QM sits at a 2.94. 
So we really wanted to help brothers achieve their own academic standards. So some of the things we implemented was an academic weekly report. So each week, members with a 3.0 and below had to write weekly letters and basically summarize their academic goals and strategies for the week. We had our provisionary members with uh, 2.5 and below had to regularly meet with our academic advisor and discuss plans how to improve their, their QM GPA. And some of the individual achievements we have is um, highest GPA, President's Award, which is a 3.5 QM or higher, Rosslyn Scholars, which is a 3.0 or higher, new member GPA, highest member GPA, and most improved GPA. And we are always constantly making improvements to our GPA as we continue to grow as, as academic scholars. Next, moving on to standards. The biggest thing we implement in standards is just holding brothers to higher standards. And not only do we just focus on, um, my favorite quote actually is one of the big four, is if you break the law, expect the consequences. We kind of tweaked it a little bit in our presentation, we break the rules, expect the consequences, to really uh, focus on our constitution bylaws of Sigma Tau Gamma. And we also not only apply positive and negative punishment, but really wanted to go towards a shift of positive and negative reinforcement. So the goal there was to address a problem before an issue arises, and really to increase and educate our behavior on issues like inclusion, diversity, and microaggression. Some examples including work, having a workshop at our chapter meeting with the CDPI office. Moving on to risk management. Risk management, in my opinion, when I first joined Sigma Tau Gamma in the spring of 2015, was the thing we lacked the most. So now we take risk management very seriously. Um, one of the, it's one of the biggest issues we have to tackle. My, my favorite quote that we use a lot is, you're always wearing your letters, and that we use that strongly in a risk management policy as you're always reflecting Sigma Tau Gamma as you walk around. So some risk management uh, duties we have is Silver Brother duties. And we actually really focused on actually making sure they're sober at social events. Um, usually three brothers per social event, making sure everything's okay <coughs> in the house and outside the house. And one of the biggest things we have with risk management is our involvement with the police. We actually, um, our new landlord for the house, bought the house based on the reputation of Sigma Tau Gamma with the police. Um, we can still improve our risk management though, in the future, we hope to work with the uh, Office of Alcohol and Other Drugs to handle issues with alcoholism because we believe that is largely unrecognized and ignored on our campus. Thank you, Mark. So philanthropy is a huge thing that our fraternity prides itself on. We have the opportunity to not only serve one, but serve two philanthropies. One being Special Olympics New York, our national philanthropy, and our second being Journey into Reading, our local philanthropy. In the fall, our main event is Polar Plunge, which benefits the Special Olympics New York, and each brother is expected to be a fundraising participant with a goal of raising $100 each per brother, and during the day of the Polar Plunge itself, each brother volunteers to work registration, parking, and setup. And then moving forward in the spring, all benefits usually go to Journey into Reading, our local philanthropy. Our main event in the spring is theme dinner where we work closely with college auxiliary services, making our decorations by hand and raffling off hot ticket items throughout the week, which all proceeds go to Journey to Reading. And besides these events listed above, we also collaborate very closely with other, other Greek organizations such as Pi Alpha New Kickball Tournament, our Bowling for Books event with Sigma Land of Upsilon, and even an SA Club kick line for our Dancing for the Stars event. Moving on to community service, we always encourage the chapter to find unique ways to do service. For example, Plattsburgh Public Library is a new service connection that we implemented this past semester. We're always looking forward to growing our connections to find new opportunities to do service. And we also encourage to do brothers not only in our Plattsburgh community, but when they're home, we also encourage them to do community service in their home communities as well. We have brothers who are volunteer firefighters, um, brothers who volunteered at their town half marathons, and we have sent brothers to all-term spring break the past five years. Social programming is something we pride ourselves on. We always want to encourage our fraternity to do sober-related events to enhance interfraternal relations, such as the ones listed above. And it doesn't stop there. We also encourage our chapter to constantly do functions that include philanthropy and community service as well.
Okay, so when it comes to new member education and recruitment, we formatted a rush week that begins with an informal session and ends with an interview. <coughs> this is different from the past, um, where we would have just various food events that would be going on. We, should, we try to learn potential new members. But we wanted to uh, tell the potential new members right from the start who we were with an informational session and end it with an interview to make sure that they were the perfect fit for our fraternity. With that being said, in the past year, we had a 100% bid acceptance rate, and which shows that our process is thorough and that we're, we're finding the right men that we want in our fraternity, and they're finding the right ones for us. Um, we all, when they accept their bid, they meet with a new member educator and assistant mem new member educator weekly. Uh, they learn about the values and history of our fraternity as well as the other organizations on our campus. We really stress that you're not just joining Sigma Tau Gamma fraternity, you're also joining the Greek life as a whole. We encourage the new member class to meet other organizations new member classes. Again, just to collaborate and, get, and really expose themselves to the new Greek life that they're entering. And in 2016, we initiated 12 new members. For leadership development, we had two conferences in the past year where we had representation for uh, our fraternity. We went to Web Academy in January in Kansas City, which was for the Vice President membership myself and the President Bailey Carlin. We learned about our positions from a national level. We met with 70 other uh, Presidents and Vice President memberships across the, across the nation and tried to better ourselves and be, be prepared for uh, what was about to come. We also increased involvement in Interfraternity Council. In the past, we've had zero representation in Interfraternity Council besides our primary delegate. We now have three of the four executive board positions filled with Vice President, uh, Vice President, President, and Vice President of Standards. Involvement in the Fraternity and Sorority Life Office, we have uh, up the Public Relations intern, Bailey Carlin, once again, and he uh, helps us be connected with, with all of Greek life as well. And then uh, when the transition of power happens, we, our executive board invites members to shadow their, uh, the current e-board, and that helps out a lot because they finally get to learn about the position. Um, they get to learn what, their, what role they really want and what role they're gonna be best in. And the uh, uh, current executive board helps the, the new um, executive board transition into power. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. So can you talk about um, kind of the on paper, you know, results versus um, your plans and, and what you were aiming for? Well, this semester actually, I know this isn't this doesn't cover this semester, but we did have 10 new members this semester, so we got that jump back up. Our focus that we did in the fall and that we really wanted to focus on was people that we thought were a great fit for us and that members that they could truly like connect with our organization. We really went for equality over quantity, and when we realize, we do realize that you can get both, and I believe this semester we achieved both. Since we were in a transitional period of this new rush week, we truly only felt like we had three guys that we really made this connection with. And as I said earlier, it's a lifelong commitment. We don't want to just have on paper 11 guys when five of them only want to come around and hang out afterwards and be part of our organization. So while it definitely looks like a dip, we, it was kind of just, I believe, like a stepping stone and a building block for the great things that are to come. Um, can you, can you okay. So I have a few different things. So first and foremost, I really appreciated that you mentioned that you're actually doing social justice and diversity work. Um, that is our fraternity sorority community's cornerstone value, um, as well as our institution. So I really appreciate when fraternity specifically says we're attempting to do this work. Um, I also really liked how you talked a little bit about sexual violence in Title IX. Um, and I'd like to hear a little bit about how those conversations or programs are going over your chapter, because those aren't easy conversations, whether it's talking about diversity, who's in the room, who's not in the room, um, 
who's out as a fraternity and who's not out as a fraternity man, you know, how will you be accepting when you meet a brother years down the road and they are out? Anyway, I'd just love to hear how those challenging conversations are, you know, in your spaces. Yes, well, actually being a minority student here in Sigma Tau Gamma, I thought these workshops were actually very constructive. And in the past um, spring class for this semester, we've actually initiated, I think, more multicultural students than we've had in the past. And this was a very important time to really address the whole issue of inclusion and diversity. And it just went over really well. Our entire chapter was extremely receptive of it. They were very accepting. And it was just a really great conversation to have with each other. It got us to understand each other on a more um, deeper level, you know. So what about identities that aren't visible? Um, what about like learning differences or, yeah? Well, I can speak from the learning differences. That's something that we focus on, especially during new member education, understanding that people have different yeah. ability levels and adapting our program to that. Uh, library hours, meeting with them individually, and also, I'm proud to say that we do have members of our fraternity who are openly gay, um, and the fact that they were comfortable, because it's, regardless, it's, it's not an easy time to do that for anyone. It's not an easy thing to make, and we had, we've had multiple fraternity brothers of ours that we were the first people that they told before they told their family, before they told their parents, before they even told their friends outside <coughs> the organization. And that's a very humbling and a very proud experience for me because that happened during my presidency. So just knowing that almost because this is before we had some of these workshops, without even making a strong effort, we were still doing enough for someone to be comfortable to come out to us was, I think, a great experience for all of us because this is our e-board from <laughs> last year. So I think it was a great experience for all of us. But on top of that, um, furthering it then and saying, let's just make it a more affordable environment, a more comfortable environment for everyone, even though we were almost by accident doing that to begin with, just without strong, without pushing it forward, but now we definitely are trying to further that as well. Talk to us a little bit about your goal setting, because I think in your written document, you had a lot of lofty goals for, for service, for philanthropy, for group and GBA, but who sets the goals and priorities for the organization? How do you disseminate that to your members and make sure that everyone's following through on something once you set it as a goal? So this semester, um, we sat down at chapter and I sat down, I was like, what do you guys want to do for our goals? And we had an hour long conversation about what we want to do for our goals and how we want to push ourselves farther to improve on what we had before. And that really like showed um, our members how they want to actually accomplish things greater than what we've done. They don't want to be just subpar, they want to be above average. Mm -hmm. So that really showed the potential of our members and I know that they'll go out to do that. So let me give a, a specific picture, like GPA, you say we want to raise our GPA from a 264 to a 294, mm -hmm. we want this to go up. Who then sets the strategy to say, how are we going to accomplish this? Mark. Well, I worked, um, when I was AVP, as Executive Vice President, I worked a lot with our alumni, alumni academic, uh, fraternity advisor, and he, uh, Ray Carmen came in in the fall of 2015, and before that we were really absent on an advisor and like kind of that figure to really look up to. So with uh, Dr. Carmen coming on, he really kind of set the bar, and we had kind of like a like a father figure to look to, to um, turn to, to not disappoint. Thanks. Any other questions? I have a few actually. So I so you talked a lot about how the expectations of your brother <coughs> to share at meetings, the event they went to, the service they went to, or if they missed classes. And then obviously we're members of social organizations, so there's the balance of expectations and the privilege of social. So you talked about if they missed one of those and they couldn't go to the social the next week. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the social next week, and if the socials are always with alcohol, then what about the brothers that choose not to drink or be in that environment? And if it is socials, that's a lot of socials every single weekend to balance out the privileges of attending the events, the service, and class. So I'd just like to hear a little bit more about that culture. Well, it wasn't necessarily uh, banned from a social event, it's just banned from the house itself. So oh, that, yeah. that, that could okay. be four or five brothers who live in the house. We have 10 brothers who live in the house, but okay. it could be four or five people just hanging out. It could be a mixer that we schedule with a sorority or a tri-mixer, quad mixer that we schedule with a fraternity sorority. It could be an invite party. We don't have a party every weekend and we don't have a mixer every weekend. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> but something that we do, um, 
we got into a trend a couple of years ago of doing weekends with two parties, and that was something that kind of scared all of us and we tried to stay away from. So we implemented a mandatory, if there was nothing scheduled for that weekend, we had a mandatory vote on having a brotherhood okay. that weekend. So brotherhoods are sometimes involved, like they are like drinking social events, but also on occasion they're not. It's just us going bowling. It's us going and even trying to do a community service event together. But, you yeah, know, we're not, we okay. don't have scheduled parties and like, oh. weekends. <laughs> right. I, I tried to make a point of myself last year when I was president and I was actually sick with mono and I didn't go to an event that week and someone busted my chops in chapter and said, well, you didn't go to an event this week. So I actually banned myself from the house and I wasn't, I was kind of grounded. I wasn't allowed to leave my room. And also I believe, like, but you'd think it seems funny and it's a joke, but it is funny and it is embarrassing and you don't, no one wants to be a 22 year old man grounded in their room while everyone else is having fun outside and you can hear them. I can tell you it's not a pleasant experience. Um, so it, I think it's encouraged people to try to get out and go to an event for sure. And it's worked. It, it worked, it was my, and my idea that I implemented as president and it worked so much better than I ever believed it could have. Yeah, I feel like you only had one and I've had one. So yeah, I think okay, so. two people ever, and one of them is myself. How are you um, utilizing academic performance through the recruitment process and in selecting new members? Uh, I really, could you repeat the question, please? Utilizing academic achievement, GPA, in new member selection. Utilizing it? Um, well, there is a process that we have to go through. We have to check all their grades. And uh, so we go through that, um, that process. And, we, and after that process, we, go, we, uh, we, we find their grades from the, from the Fraternity and Sorority Life Office. And then after that, we do base our decision for accept, uh, extending out bids based on their GPA. We, in the interview process, we ask them, why is your GPA low? Do you think, did you just have a bad class last semester? Um, what is your plan to going forward? We really try to figure out the root of their issues for, with their um, academic achievements or lack thereof. And yeah, I've been able to job. We also asked them how they think Sigma Tau Gamma would enhance their academic learning or if it would hinder it at all. And we basically judge the responses on deciding whether or not <coughs> we should extend the fit to a student who's prospering or struggling. And if I could just jump on top of that as well. We've also had conversations with individuals that we thought would be a great fit for our organization, but we're floating around that 2.5 GPA range and tell them to take a semester. Take a semester, get your grades together this semester, and then try <coughs> again next semester. Don't look elsewhere. And we've had a high success rate with that. And we've also had, a, I, I want to say, three or four kids who just missed the GPA requirement. And joining Sigma Tau Gamma was their, was their push that they needed to get themselves up above. And we've had some students who have gone from a 2-3 to a 3-2, two, 3-3 three, three within just a year period. Because especially when you're getting second semester freshman, one bad class your first semester of college, someone who signs up for stats or a tough class that struggles, that can completely wipe you out for the semester. So we understand that you do have those classes, but we also encourage people, almost like prove it to us that it was just one tough class, take another semester and then we'll see you in the fall. Thank you. Allison, correct me if I'm reading this wrong, but on the academic report it says you were we remember two of them GPA is at 305 and their semester GPA is at 273. So does it seem like they're struggling academically while they're joining your organization? And if so, what are you doing for them through the new member process to help them? Well, when we, in our interviews, because I've sat in the interviews for the last couple semesters, when we make sure before they accept their bids that they're going to be academically capable, I liken the new member education process to a two to three credit class is what I tell them. So I'm like, if you were to top that out on top of your schedule right now, is that something you still think you could handle? Last semester, all three brothers told me that they could, and maybe the case was that they weren't 100%. Um, we did have all three of them meet with our advisor, Dr. Ray Carmen, during to try to help their GPAs and figure that out. And we also implemented during the new member education process required library hours for them. So one, it's a good bonding activity for the three members of the new member class to hang out together and also to try to get in the library. But um, it wasn't the greatest semester for them. Um, but I also think the small class kind of didn't help that as well because there, was, there wasn't really someone able to like drag it up or bring it down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.